Hey guys, welcome back to Planet J Judah and welcome to another Am I the A-Hole Reddit Rabbit Hole episode. This time, knitting, knitting edition. Oh my goodness. I hope you got your cup of coffee. And by the way, today I am doing a donut shop coffee with, of course, my Irish, Irish, where did that come from? Italian sweet cream creamer, but this time I have added salted caramel, hot cocoa, and boy, does that make some great coffee. So that, so that being said, I hope you have your cup of coffee or tea or snack, whatever it may be, and sit back, relax, and let's find some juicy Am I the A-Hole? All right, so this first one is from a year ago, and it is from Evie Chan. I will put their name on the screen. And this one says, am I the a-hole for saying I would never knit something for my mother again? Keep in mind this was a year ago. So she says, or I should say they say, they say, Three weeks ago, I gave my mother a beanie I had knitted for her. Last week, I saw her unraveling it and knitting it again. This means she undid my gift, did it right, quote unquote. It made me feel bad, but I said nothing to her back then and planned to say nothing but never knit anything for her again. Today, she was opening a bag I had tied with a knot and said something like, sorry to ruin your masterpiece, and giggled. And this triggered me. It reminded me of the beanie, and I said to her something like, wow, you just love to undo anything I do, I guess. She looked confused and then said, like the beanie, I knitted for you. Oh, she looked at, my goodness, she looked confused. And then I said, quote, like the beanie I knitted for you, you just had to undo it. I'm never going to knit something for you ever again. She got upset, said I was misunderstanding the situation, that she loved the beanie, but didn't, but, but didn't fit correctly. And she was trying to do it again so she could actually wear it that I was rude, that it was rude of me to say I would never knit anything for her again, ever again, and proceeded to stop talking to me. Wow. My goodness. So, let's see. She's, or they have offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a, the a-hole. Uh, one, saying I would never knit something again for my mother. Two, is it really rude to say such a thing? And then, let's see. The first comment is not the a-hole. I crochet, I crochet and my feelings would be so hurt that the least she could have done is tell you and give you the chance to fix it yourself or at least tell you before she fixed it so you didn't think she just hated your work. In all fairness though, you probably should have brought up that your feelings were hurt right away instead of waiting for another annoyance and bringing it up then. But I still don't think you are an, a an ass for this. My feelings would be really hurt if I spent my time making something and the recipient unraveled it to see the yarn for their own, to use the yarn for their own project. I agree. And let's see. Um, See if we can find another that's not tied to that one. Uh, 
Uh, ah, here we go. Here we go. Another person said, not the a-hole. If it did not fit, the correct thing to do was to honestly tell you, tell it to you and ask if you could make it the right size or if she could do it with your permission. Another person said, not the a-hole. I made a crochet blanket for my grandmother once for Christmas. I'm not very good at it and I was still trying to figure out how to get the sides straight, but for her blanket, I used really soft yarn that was also sit thick. It was a Christmas present and it gave, and to give context, I work an hour away from where I live and I work overnight. So I was staying up a lot and barely getting sleep because I wanted it to be done and shipped to her on time. I chose the yarn I did because, I chose the yarn I did because she has a lot of pain and stuff and I heard that like weighted blankets helped people so I had used that yarn because it was soft and it would be a little heavier but I thought it would help. I even used a color she liked. On Christmas we watched her open it on video chat no excitement or anything which okay fine fair enough I guess. Apparently it was too heavy for her to sleep under which again that's Fair, I suppose, but it kind of hurt when she told my mom that she wanted to donate the blanket. Something else happened on a future Christmas that made her wanting to donate the blanket so much worse. No clue if she did donate the blanket or not, but yeah, your feelings are valid and definitely you are not the a-hole. Okay, that was a bit winded. <laughs> So, so far, everybody's saying that they are not, not the a-hole. She should have told you it didn't fit and asked you to fix it. Her reaction of not speaking to you is extreme. Yep, true. Not the a-hole. Your mother has shown herself to be not nit, nit worthy. That was incredibly rude of her. Someone else said, not a-hole. Keep your promise. And someone else said, not the a-hole. Oh, I am so sorry. My mom is like this. She is very talented at cooking and crafts. I have become a great cook because of her, and I'm pretty crafty, but nothing I make is usually good enough. She criticizes so much. I don't think it's ever really to be mean just how she is, but it tears me down. I rarely cook anything for her anymore, and I definitely don't make her anything. I learned to sew when I was eight. After high school, I didn't see for many years. I finally bought a machine, or didn't sew, I'm assuming, for many years. I finally bought a machine and made my children matching Easter dresses. When I got to her house, she actually looked at my, my hems. I had machine hemmed because I had three small children and didn't have time to hand sew a blind hem. So instead of being proud, she was disappointed. I didn't finish them properly. Wow, okay, that one's... So far, everybody's saying not the a-hole. And yeah, totally, not the a-hole, not the a-hole. Um, I think that, yes, she should have told her then when it first happened uh, that it hurt her. Her mom's reaction was a little over extreme. Both of them were a little over extreme. So yeah, I guess I agree. She's not the a-hole. Um, Cause I would be seriously sad and disappointed if that happened to me. Um, my mom doesn't crochet, so <laughs> she would never, and I don't knit yet. I'm wanting to learn, but um, my mom doesn't crochet, so she would never be able to do that. She would probably just have me fix it. But her mom totally should have said, hey, it doesn't fit right, could you fix this? Or since she is also a knitter, may I fix it in the same way that it, so that it would fit though? So, okay, all right, on to the next one. All right, so this one is from three years ago. And it is by Mountain Rhubarb. Again, their name will be right there. And this one says, I avoid buying patterns. 
Am I the a-hole? Coming at you with a genuine question because I need someone to give it to me straight as I may have worked myself into a justification loop. I'm currently working on finding, modifying, slash modifying, uh, base knitting patterns for raglan yoke drop shoulder and set in sleeve sweaters that fit me and only me perfectly and then gusty them up with different fibers, weights, ease, necklines, hemlines, color work, texture, lace, panels, etc. The base patterns have slash are coming from patterns I have used both free and purchased, but the inspiration for the gussying often comes from paid patterns I do not own. My current example, I love the Sunday cardigan. I'll have to look them up. The Sunday cardigan, but I can make a circular yoke sweater with four by four ribbing in my size and gauge without buying the pattern. It's an evening of swatching and math, then checking it against EPS, I don't know what that is, and strange brew, strange brew paid patterns that I own. Those must be two different people, designers that do patterns. Uh, and then she goes on to say, books by Elizabeth Zimmerman, Barbara Walker, and Amy Herzog are my knitting Bibles and have held my hand through my knitting journey and shown me that you can knit any custom sweater without a formal pattern. Am I the a-hole for not paying the designer of my inspiration sweater 680 for a pattern I don't feel I need? I have no desire to knit for others, sell my work, or create patterns for others to use. Where do you draw the line? Okay. You know, to be honest, I, I've paid for crochet patterns and I've not paid for crochet patterns. I um, actually, I will follow YouTube. So I guess I'm more of a visual learner. And so reading a pattern is a little bit difficult for me. Reading a pattern and bringing it to fruition is a little bit difficult for me, but that doesn't stop me. I do have actually maybe like less than 10, I'll say less than 10, but um, if I can find a free pattern, I'm gonna do it. If I can create something from patterns that I already own, that I've already paid for, but also change it up and do something on my own, I'm gonna do that. So uh, in this one, I don't think that uh, Mountain Rhubarb is the a-hole for this, but let's see what Reddit says. So the first person says, heck no. In fact, I get super annoyed when I see designers of note publishing patterns at often quite a steep fee, which are essentially easily available stitch patterns plus border. Um, Jared Flood is a repeat offender. I don't know who that is. Nice work if you can get it, mate. Okay. Someone else said, I feel guilty as a designer when I charge $7 for a pattern. I think anyone could work out with a copy of knitting from the top and tape measure, but people pay it. You're not the a-hole. You're my kind of knitter. Oh, well, that's cool. That was a cool, that was a cool response. Someone else, uh, not the a-hole, and we are flooded with knitting patterns that are basic as F or just copies of other patterns. We have so many people hawking $10, $10 patterns that are literally four, four chunky yarn squares sewn together called and called a sweater. I pay for patterns that save me time or introduce me to new technique that I don't know. That's cool. Okay. Someone else, definitely not. I don't enjoy the swatching and math and designing you speak of, so I pay for the patterns. The only adjustments I make are length of the body and such. You enjoy all the math, go for it. So yeah, okay. So we agree that mountain rhubarb is not the a-hole. And I don't think you should feel like you, if you can, if you want to pay for a pattern 
uh, like that one person said, that some brings something new to your repertoire, then by all means do so. If it's something that you've already got a handle on, I don't see the need to buy another pattern um, if you tweak it a little to make it more personal for you. So yeah, I guess, you know, I try to look for free, free patterns or I know that I can buy patterns that are on YouTube as a tutorial and I just follow the tutorial instead of buying that pattern. I'm still supporting that person because I'm watching their YouTube channel. I subscribe to their YouTube channel. And if I so choose to, I may buy a pattern from them, but I may not buy that specific pattern if, if they have a tutorial on their channel. Uh, that's why they put it there so that you can follow the tutorial, even though they are also selling the pattern. So, I mean, I don't think this person is the a-hole. And so, yeah, let me see. I think we can do maybe one or two more. So let me find another one. Okay, so this one's a little bit longer, so it might be our last one. And I believe I have actually heard this one before, but it is pretty, if it is the same one, then the situation is, I think, pretty intense. So this was six months ago, and it was uh, put on by Fem Cheming, Cheming? To me, I'm not, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, not that you'll be seeing this, but anyways, I will also put their name and it says, am I the a-hole for not letting another lady do my knitting? So yes, this is definitely, I do know this one and this is her story. She says, so I was on a five hour train journey today and I took my knitting with me. And the lady next to me spends her time trying to talk to me. This was my alone time listening to a podcast and knitting. Telling, in parentheses, telling me all about how in her home country knitting is taught in schools and how my technique is wrong and how I should let her do it and help me. Excuse me. This is my alone time, so I just say I'm fine doing it my way and keep going with my pattern open on my phone. She is literally begging me every time I move slightly or re readjust to let her knit a row. If you don't know much about knitting, then you know that different people have different knitting t tensions and I knit very tight. Someone coming in and knitting a row looser would destroy the 18 hours work I've put into this piece as I'd have to unpick and loosen the previous row. Anyways, I nipped to the loo to the very, the first time. Sorry, let me reread that. I'm, I'm having trouble reading apparently. <laughs> Anyways, I nipped to the loo the first time and I come back and my stuff isn't how I left it. She admits that she was going to knit more, but the lady opposing, opposing us, we were on a table of four, told her not to. And when I got my work, I raised what she'd moved the, I realized that she'd moved the stitches and they weren't in the correct order. I fixed this and carried on. I went to nip to the loo again and got to the end of the carriage and saw her reaching for my knitting stuff. So I took it with me and did so every time I went to the loo after that. She kept getting in my space crit and critiquing me and not leaving me alone. I ended up snapping. If you wanted to knit, you should have brought your own knitting and not be trying to do mine. F off. She started crying and moved seats. I may have been harsh, but this was three hours of her being over my shoulder and touching my stuff after being told, no, am I the a-hole? And she edited it and says, thank you for all the kind responses. People were asking why didn't I move earlier? The train was full. How often do I need to go to the loo? I went to the loo four times. I currently have an eye condition where I need to put in drops every hour and they leave 
an awful taste in my mouth, so I end up drinking a lot of water. I went through my two liter bottle of water on the train. Okay, so as for me, I'm sorry, it's my project that I am working on. If I wanted somebody's help after they told me that they grew up doing this, I would ask for it. Uh, I would politely stop them every time and say, no, I really would like to do this on my own. And yeah, I don't, I don't think that she is the a-hole for this. Um, that person should have stopped when she said no the first time. No, it's my project. I would like to do it my way. And this is how I do it. You know, it, it's subjective. We knit or crochet completely differently. We get the basic stitches, but I'm left-handed. So I knit left-handed. Knit. I crochet left-handed. So my work comes out differently than somebody else who crochets right-handed. And then also the tension is a big thing. So she is completely right in the fact that if someone came up behind her and started doing her project with a different tension and a different style, it would not be the same as what they were doing. So I don't think that she was the a-hole. Now granted, she might have gotten a little too extreme with her, but still, um, I don't think she was wrong. The other person should have said, okay, and just left it alone when she first said, no, I would like to do it on my own. Thank you very much. And let's see, um, the, this is why she said, OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I could have just let her knit a row and not snapped at her and then she would have been happy. But there again, you would, she would have probably had to undo that row because it wouldn't have been the same texture as her knitting. So, I mean, you've spent a lot of time on it. I wouldn't want to have to undo anything that was done. So that's just me. Um, the first comment is, not the a-hole, fellow knitter here, but I don't need to be one to make this assertion. As you said, everyone knits differently and made your, and you made yourself clear that you weren't looking for help. And not only is this obnoxious, she didn't listen to you or the other person politely telling her no. If someone did this to my work, I'd be livid. It's detail-oriented, math-driven crafting. I couldn't pick up someone else's painting and finish it because I might know how to execute a technique better. It's your version, your project, your personal space. That is said so perfectly. I agree 100%. Uh, and the, the um, original poster, she said, thank you. That really makes me feel validated. She just wouldn't stop. And the people around me thought I was very harsh because it's just knitting but this is a big project for me with the most expensive yarn I've ever used. So that makes a whole difference all in itself. You know, we don't know what's gone into creating whatever it is that they are working on. And it could be something, I mean, it could be for someone incredibly special. So they want it to be just by them, not by someone else either. Uh, let's see. Not the a-hole. You should have told her to, you should, you should have told her to F off a lot sooner than that. Okay. She likes to knit. Good for her. Like you said, if she wanted to knit, she was more than welcome to bring her own project. She had no right to touch your things. It's also none of the business of the people around you and you are and you being too harsh. She wasn't doing to them what she was doing to you. They at uh, they and F 
right off as well. Oh, they can F right off as well. <laughs> I mean, crocheting and knitting and anything that's craft related is such a personal thing. So to have someone come in and try to correct you, I think is wrong. So bottom line, she is not the a-hole and everybody else on Reddit agrees wholeheartedly. So yeah, not the a-hole. And now for our cuteness. This is by Friendly Cute Toys and it is Cute Knitted Possums. Aren't they adorable? Oh my goodness. Let's see. Am I going the right way? Nope, this is by somebody else. And that's by somebody else. Okay, so that's it. That's the la that's the picture. And aren't they the cutest? I love possums. They are so cute. And this is a very cute knitted family. I can't believe. I don't know. I'm sorry if it's hard to see. But they are so cute. I love possums. Alrighty. Well, that is this it guys i hope you have enjoyed today's reddit am i the a-hole knitting edition and i look forward to doing more every week and with that remember gravity works guys